Welcome back. We're going to take a look at Go routines. Now, most of our code up until this point, except for say like our web server code, has been sequential, meaning everything runs in an exact order. Now, one of the downfalls of this is that any time that our code ends up waiting, let's say for like a network call or waiting on disk access, well, that time is wasted even if we have other time, other other work that could be getting done. So, to simulate this, we're going to be running four functions, print A, B, C, and D, and each one of them is just going to take a count. They're going to loop 100 times, and they're going to print off A, B, C, or D, depending on which function. So print B is going to be printing off B. And to simulate these little wait times, we're going to be using the sleep function inside the time package, and we have it set for one nanosecond. Now keep in mind, um, yes, a nanosecond is one billionth of, billionth of a second. This is actually going to be at least a couple milliseconds. It's going to be longer than that, but I just went ahead and set it for a really low number. Uh, but anyway, so if we run this, A is going to run, B is going to run, C is going to run, and then D is going to run. So let's go ahead and run this, and then we'll try it with uh, Go Routines next. There we go. A is going to run, B is going to run, C is going to run, and D is going to run, exactly in the order we expected it to. So to change these to Go routines, we're going to go ahead and just add the Go keyword in front. And then we're going to run it. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is that, so when this runs, it's not going to, if it gets, if it's going to be waiting on say that sleep function for A, it should uh, the Go Runtime scheduler should switch it to one of these other Go routines so it can get some work done. So let's see uh, how much quicker that is. Uh, there we go. So we don't waste any of our time. We have other work that can be done. We're not going to waste our time uh, waiting you know, for everything to run sequentially. We're going to get done whatever can get done in the moment. So uh, the Runtime scheduler uh, in Golang is, you know, it's built for speed. So as you can tell, um, there's no particular order. Everything's just however quickest it can get everything run. Now, uh, one thing to be aware of, uh, we're, it, we're actually running uh, five Go routines because Funk main is a Go routine and then it spins up these other four. Now, if it doesn't have time to finish these before main runs, well then, well, let's just show you what happens. There we go. So we finished Funk main, and since we didn't have it wait, well, these didn't have time to run. So this one is for demonstration. This is not the recommended way by any means, but for a demonstration, yes, it can be, you know, it, it works. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next example. So, well, before we look at that, let's talk about some of the disadvantages of using it this way. So if I don't put enough time in here, well, these go routines may not finish. And if I put too much time, well, then our, our main function is just going to run longer than it needs to. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next example. All right. So for this one, we're going to be using the sync package and particularly let's go ahead and pull that up. The ones that we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be using the wait group, which has an add, done, and delete method. So we're going to create our wait group data type, and then we're going to use those. So basically, uh, wait is going to make sure that it blocks um, until the counter is zero. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, for each go routine, we're going to go ahead and add one to the counter. And then when that go routine is finished, we're going to have it run done and then wait once this, so we're going to go ahead and add uh, to the counter for each one of the go routines as they finish. Uh, done is going to reduce that counter by one and when it gets back down to zero, it's no longer going to block and then our code can finish. So let's go back to our code. So again, we have our, our functions here again. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make our, our WG, our wait group, uh, uh, variable. So we're going to use sync .wait group. There's our data types where we have access to those methods. And then for each, and when we go down and run, we're going to go ahead and on our, our variable, we're going to run the method add, and we want to go ahead and add four because we're going to be running four go routines. 
So as each one of these go routines, you know, A, you know, print, print B, print C, print, print D, as these finish, as you can see, we're still going to be looping 100, 100 times and printing off a letter, and we still have that wait in there, where we're going to be using the done uh, method, which is going to go ahead where add, you know, take the counter to four. Well, this is say one of these finishes, it's going to take it down one. It's going to take it down to three, then a two to one. And when finally, when it gets to zero, you know, this is going to stop blocking and then funk man can finish. So the advantage of this being is we're not going to have to wait. We aren't going to have to put in that sleep and try and guess how long it'll be. So we know that these will finish and we know that uh, we're not going to add a whole bunch of excess time like we did with uh, the sleep function from the time package. So let's just go ahead and run this. As you can see, once it's finished, I didn't have that extra little bit of wait time on there. So no guessing. And we know that everything got done. So uh, with this one, uh, using the sync package, this is really great. Uh, say if uh, we just need to synchronize everything, if we need to pass around uh, data type, you know, complex data types or anything, you know, anything beyond just a counter, well, we're going to go ahead and use channels for that. But we're going to go ahead and uh, save that for a separate video. So let's go ahead and go to our last example. Okay, so in the real world, uh, you're going to want to spin up as many Go routines as you'd need for the workloads. If you have a lot of workload, you're going to spin up more. If you have fewer, you spin up less. Uh, say, for instance, in the uh, HTTP package, when you're running your web server, depending on how many different routes that you're registering with the handle func functions, well, it's going to, you know, Obviously, if you register more of them, it's going to register more Go routines. We can have one of those, you know, hand, you know, at least one of those handling each one of those routes. Um, anyway, so in our example here, uh, we have a slice of string. So this could be many URLs, or just, or like we have here, just a few URLs. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, for loop. We're going to branch through the URLs. We're going to grab the URL for each one of those loops, and we're going to go ahead and add one because we're going to be spinning up a go routine in each one of these loops and we're using an anonymous function here don't forget that on our anonymous function we're going to go ahead and pass in uh, our url variable so and by passing it in this way um, it's just a, a copy so um, it can be really helpful if say if you're using a counter for loop just a uh, sorry a little off topic there but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and spin up a Go routine, and then we're going to go ahead and use, uh, we want to run on our, our, our wait group. We want to make sure we run done. So we're just going to run defer. It defers great. So we can just set this right here at the beginning, and we don't have to worry about putting it down here at the end and forgetting it later. While it's still in our mind, like, hey, just go ahead and put it in here. Uh, we're going to use h2.get. We're going to pass in our URL. We're going to get our response and our error. Check for our error. If so, log, uh, log fatal. And uh, just you know, close the body. And this one's pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and print the URL. And then on the response, proto is just short for the HTTP protocol for what we got return for what we got for this response. So anyway, and then of course we have wait group. So since this is going to loop three times, we're going to add three to the wait group counter. And then when each one of those finishes, uh, we're, it's going to go ahead and take one off of that counter. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so notice that some of them came in a little quicker, a little bit slower. Uh, so this is a little bit, this is an actual real world one where we're actually uh, using a get request, you know, get request. We're getting a response back um, and it's telling us, hey, you know, uh, Google is uh, HTTP 1.1 and YouTube is 2.0 and Golang Org is 2.0. And let's just see if we, we run it again, if we get them in a slightly different order. Nope, still, still same order. But anyway, depending on how long they take, it, it could end up in different orders, say if it ends up waiting on one of them. Uh, let's see if there's anything else to cover here.
Well, I hope, uh, like I said, we're going to be covering uh, passing around other data types using uh, channels in another video. Uh, if you liked, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out, and every little bit is appreciated. Well, I hope, this, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.